Welcome to In the Know. I'm Mark Crosby of Quincy Access Television. In the Know looks at uh, information that we feel is important uh, to let you in on. The presidential primaries, that's our topic today. So it's all about elections. And uh, talking with me here in the studio is the city clerk here in the city of Quincy, Nicole Crispo. Nicole, welcome back. Hi, thanks, Mark. Thanks for coming in. Certainly, uh, anytime we ask, you are more than willing to come chat with us. I think it's because we're friendly folks. Sure, of course. <laughs> Uh, the presidential primaries, uh, Tuesday, March 3rd, also known as Super Tuesday. Uh, a big day, certainly. certainly Any is. presidential election is big in the city of Quincy. Any election is big in the city of Quincy. Uh, what can you talk, uh, tell us about um, that particular day and uh, the ballots that will be available that day for folks? Yes, thank you. Uh, we are busy. And we're happy to um, get this election ready for our 31 precincts in the city. Um, we are open 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, all of our polling places will be fully staffed. All of our poll workers have been fully trained. Um, we look forward to the day. Um, leading up to the day, we're going to have early voting which I'll get to, and we also have absentee voting available in our city. Um, but first off, um, let me say that this is a um, partisan election. There is a Democratic um, ballot. There is a Republican ballot. So here we have Democratic, there Republican. There is a Green Rainbow ballot, and there is a libertarian ballot. This is like a show and tell. Yes, I, I wanted to bring as much information as I All could. Right, I don't have a third hand. Okay. Folks get the sense of there are numerous ballots. Yes. Um, so um, these ballots will all be available to you on election day. I will emphasize that this is a partisan election. So therefore, um, the, you do have to choose a party ballot. There is no independent or unenrolled ballot. Okay, so um, you must declare which ballot you want. You get a Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, or Green Rainbow to choose from. Okay. And there are a number of unenrolled folks in the city, correct? Oh, there are. There are uh, more unenrolled than Republican and Democrat together. Right. So that's, um, that is something that you'll have to take into consideration before you go to the polls. And on the ballot, there is um, the presidential preference. There's state committee man, state committee woman, and ward committee. Um, so, I mean, it, there's some, on some ballots here, there are 35 people on the ward committee. There is a spot at the top that you can vote for the whole group if you'd like, or you can vote for each individually, or there's always write-in spaces available for um, anybody you wish to write in on any of these contests. Um, so we do have um, some locals running for uh, state committee, me and uh, Patrick McDermott, who is the incumbent, and John Kane also, and um, state committee woman um, on the Democratic side, um, Alicia Gardner, I believe, is running on a sticker campaign. Okay. So um, then um, uh, I will leave these for you so that you can please. put them up on the website so that anybody can get any information. And we'll post them here sure. at uh, QATV as well. But um, these, uh, the committee man, the committee woman, and the wards, uh, what's the significance of those positions? So um, the caucus, uh, they had the caucus last week. Um, if you want to be a part of the ward committee in your specific ward, um, get involved in the caucus. These are uh, the delegates for that represent your area. And these are uh, the state committee men and women are for Quincy Okay. as a whole. I do uh, want to take a look at, um, well, before we even get there, I, I do want to mention that the deadline to register to vote has passed. So has. if folks haven't registered yet, they won't be able to vote in this election, correct? That's right. So um, certainly call our office, 617-376-1144, um, 
and uh, we can look it up for you or you can certainly go on the quinzyma.gov website that brings you right to um, Secretary Galvin's link to find out if you're registered to vote. And if you're not registered to vote in Quincy and you've moved within the last six months, most likely you can go back to your old polling place and vote, just call your city of town who you were last in. Now I know specifically we'll look at the Democratic ballot because folks will notice that there are 15 candidates listed. Yes, yes, we have a very big ballot for the Democrats. Um, but some have already chosen to end their campaign. Right, so we should mention so that these ballots were printed a while back. They were, so, um, but again, w you know, we have 15 participants, so we have a big ballot, so that's another thing that we should point out, that it is a presidential primary, it is going to be a busy day, um, you can take advantage of the early voting to try to you know, remediate some of that at the polling place. But just so that you know, we have tested these ballots and they're coded, but it does take 10 seconds to get the ballot into the machine for tabulation. So that's important because, you know, it, it's a process. And so you come in, you check in, you give your address, your name and uh, your party and you get your ballot, you go vote, and then you need to take a couple more seconds to put your ballot through the machine before you get your I voted sticker. Okay. <laughs> which, which people proudly Oh wear. yes, absolutely. We're, we're happy to give them. Uh, just uh, finishing off, there are four on the Republican ballot, 10 on the Libertarian ballot, and four on the Green Rainbow Party ballot. Yes. I do, uh, I j just a question too, before we leave the ballot completely, how is the order determined? The order. The position. The position is. Um, is that a drawing? Is that? It is a drawing. Yes, it's it's not alphabetical. So it's it's a random. Drawing. Random drawing. Okay. Yes. Just curious. All right. So early voting, uh, that is starting in the city on the twenty fourth of this month, February. That's right. February 24th through February 28th. I have a flyer here. You'll see these throughout the city. Bring it a little closer to you, I think. This uh, way? Right in front of you. Not right in front of your face. There we okay. go. Okay. That's good. Um, you'll see th these throughout the city, um, February 24th to 28th, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30, in City Hall, uh, the old City Hall lower level. Um, and we'll be all set up there for you to come in. Um, you go in, check in, you get your ballot, you vote it, you put it in an envelope, okay? And you drop the envelope. We don't count early voting ballots until election day, okay? And, and an early vote cast is the vote that is cast. It can't it. be changed. That's it, because and then I'm very excited um, to announce this, we are going to have central tabulation facility right, in the that. city of Quincy. Um, so in 2016, when we did our early voting, we had almost 20% of the city come out and vote early. And so um, we then, like we do with the absentees, we compile all the ballots and we send them out to the polling place for them to go through the tabulator that day. And we found that that was very cumbersome for the poll workers and the residents because they were waiting while we were trying to drive ballots through and um, it, it, it was a long process. Some of the um, precincts didn't come in until midnight. And so, you know, everybody's tired. They've been there since um, six in the morning. So that makes for a long day. So um, I've been working with our vendor and the Secretary of State's office, and uh, they've come up with a new high speed counter tabulator that um, we're going to use at City Hall on election day with the same thing. It, it's almost like a precinct of people that are gonna check the names off the book, they're going to open the ballots, they're going to tab them down, to, and they're going to run through a machine. They do about 50 ballots a minute. So um, 
we should be um, probably done with that process, we think, by 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So that, therefore, you can't go out to the polling place after you've early voted and ask for a ballot because we're doing them. We're going to start that right at 7 o'clock. Correct. Now, Quincy is one of these locations. Quincy and Malden are the first two in the, in the Commonwealth to have the central tabulation facility with the high-speed scanner. Great. Yeah, great so, to be uh, kudos to you. For thank you. We're, we're really excited for it, and I, I think it's going to be a plus. Um, I will then um, do a report um, on uh, the tabulator. I will forward it to my um, city ta city clerks association as well as the town clerks association, um, whether good or bad, and um, submit it to the state and they'll take it that into consideration for certification in the fall. I do want to talk about absentee voting. That uh, is ongoing and continues until noontime on March 2nd. Yes. So, yes, we are very busy in the election department um, getting out um, these requests. As soon as we get them in, we turn them right around. We get them out the next day um, or that day. Um, right now we have 650 people who have taken advantage of um, the absentee voting in the city thus far. And just to go over what constitutes an absentee ballot, a request for an absentee ballot. A physical disability, religious beliefs, or if you are out of the city on election day. Okay. Those three um, need to, those are the requirements for um, getting an absentee ballot. If you're physically unable to be there, um, it, and that can go from, you know, you're in, in, in a facility or you are um, away at school, um, parents can come up and fill out an absentee ballot. Uh, any family member can fill out an absentee ballot request for their kids or their loved ones, their parents um, that can't get to the polls. And an absentee ballot uh, can be changed on election day? Is that possible? Uh, yes. So here's the thing. Um, say it's a beautiful day and somebody wants to go to the polling place they expected it to be um, bad weather but it's a beautiful day as long as we haven't um, put their absentee ballot through the tabulator they can request to have a, a ballot right there at the polling place okay. and then when the absentee ballots go out to the polling place we'll pull that ballot already voted and indicate that and put it in the um, absentee ballot envelope. Talking about the polling places, no change? No changes in our polling places. Um, and I, th we, excuse me, in January, um, we set the polling places with the city council. So there's no changes. We just talked about the 2020 census and the 2021. If there's any changes, it will be after that. Right, correct. <laughs> Uh, the voting systems, uh, the marking devices, no changes there no as well. No changes. Everything's the same. Fill in the oval, um, and, and you'll be good to go. Talking about reporting the results and how those will come in, and when they, uh, and initially they're considered unofficial, and talk about why that is. Yes. So we um, offer um, federal ballots to go out okay they go to military and people that residing overseas so we give them 10 days in order to get their ballot back to us so in provisional ballots if you're if you go out to vote and you're not on the voting list and you are you know pretty sure that you registered to vote at that polling place we will offer you a uh, provisional ballot those will be counted after those will be determined by the Board of Registrars the day after. Um, some of them are RMV inquiries, so we um, check with the Registry of Motor Vehicles whether that ballot can be counted or not. And the whole unofficial results that will be posted, they need to be unofficial before they are certified. Sure. So um, the certification process comes after the 10 days. Um, we do wait for all of our um, federal ballots to come back. Um, but I in the meantime, we will put up the unofficial results the day after the election on the city website. Which again is quinzyma.gov. Yes. And lastly, just uh, I know you rely quite heavily on your poll workers. 
Uh, so talk about uh, them. It uh, is a day that uh, is quite busy, yes. no matter if it's a city election or a presidential primary. Uh, votes need to be cast. They need to be counted. There's 325 poll workers in our city. We couldn't do it without them. They are amazing. They, they work two or three times a year, and you can always count on them. Um, we have trained them all. We've had them for um, five trainings last week, and um, they're ready to go. They're very knowledgeable. They know to call us if they need anything. Uh, and our el elections logistics team, same thing. They get all of our um, machines ready. They um, get all of our supplies out to the polling places. We can't do it without them. And um, you know, kudos to them, uh, Joe Newton, assistant city clerk, and my whole staff who work so hard during this time of the year to be sure that all of our residents are treated the same and have the opportunity to vote. And do you get uh, quite uh, a lot of response from folks that would like to help? We do, and, and we're always looking for more. Um, we, we pay, <laughs> which is a nice thing. Right. Um, people, some people think it's a volunteer um, day, but it's not. We do pay you, and um, if you'd like, we do have a small application. It's more informational than um, application, but um, you can certainly come up to our office or call uh, m Assistant City Clerk Joe Newton at 617 376 one one four five for the opportunity to work the polls and as we close uh, again uh, talking about the date of the election of course super tuesday so that is tuesday march third and uh, the polls are open at um, 7 a.m. 7 a.m. they close at 8 p.m. again very important uh, this year early voting go over that once again yes early voting is march uh, um, for march third is february twenty fourth through twenty eighth it's monday through friday 8.30 to 4.30 in the lower level of Old City Hall at 1305 Hancock Street. We have a wonderful team assembled there to um, fulfill the needs of early voting. It's, it's a convenience thing. We appreciate you taking advantage of it, and we hope you have a good experience. I want to thank you for coming in. Uh, we had a great experience here at Quincy Access Television because you came in. Thank you. <laughs> and we certainly, uh, we will uh, follow the results as they're uh, reported. And um, I want to thank you um, for certainly chatting with me and uh, through me to the folks at home. Thank you. I want to thank you for watching this particular program of Quincy Access Television. Please continue to watch Quincy Access TV for more locally produced programming.